So this is a season of spilling the light. This is the summer solstice today, um, the longest day of the year in the, in the Northern hemisphere, a season of collective celebration, flower crowns and maypoles in Sweden, all night parties and concerts of the white knights in St. Petersburg, Russia, which I've always wanted to see. In Christianized cultures, the solstice becomes the feast of John the Baptist. I just found this out. Bonfires lit in his honor to burn away evil. Or in the Philippines, as I understand it, it's the festival of water to honor baptism, a day to go swimming, and also to throw water on people for fun and tradition. In the United States, for many of us, um, although not all of us with especially with young children. Um, for many of us, it's a, this is a season of opening up, of returning to see friends, of more energy, more things um, available after our COVID winter. This is a season when the bright light of the sun and the drenching rains are nurturing everything growing in our yard. I may have said this before, but I can almost watch the feral mint growing in my yard from the window where I write. You can almost see it going. In this season, I want to imagine that I can scoop up the energy of this season like a happy tomato plant feeding on the energy of the sun. I want to feel like the love of the divine is warming me and embracing me like the warm summer sun like there's nowhere that isn't illuminated in love and belonging. I want to know that a bonfire could burn away the evil spirits of trauma and to know that good luck and good will follow. I've been reflecting on these yearnings and also on this season as a reminder that we cannot live alone. Um, we can't live without the light of the sun. Um, although at least for me, maybe for you, that's easy to forget in a life that's so full of bright overhead lights and constantly present screens. But we cannot sustain life by ourselves. So whether for you, that's something you feel as the arms of mother earth cradling you or the steadfast love of God never ending, or the continually unfolding wonder of tiny mosses and distant stars reminding you that this world is just more, more than whatever's going on for one person. I hope that you can tune into that, that feeling of being sustained this season. To quote Reverend Soto, you belong right here, right now. And together we chase away the sickness, the secrets, and leave only the open possibility that the future is a space for growth. Is there something in your life that's shining on you with warmth and care? Something in your life that is cl clearing away, like the community in the poem or like a bonfire? Or is there something that you hope and pray will begin to shine forth? I'm positing that this is a good season for those hopes and for those prayers. Um, so I'm going to spend some time in the next couple of days um, being a creative person, at drawing or coloring or writing about those questions. And I invite you to do the same. Maybe you wanna draw something and send me a picture. Or maybe you want to draw something and never send anyone a picture. That's cool too. Um, but yeah, write or draw or sing or paint or dance your hopes and your gratitude. Of course, this isn't to say that everything is always easy. Um, I know that if you're in a hard time, it can be really hard to find that feeling of everything good and everything possible shining around and on you. Um, I, I know that I've been in those times recently. 
And I know that that's exactly when singing and dancing and yoga and bonfires and noticing joy around me and creating moments of joy and expression is most necessary alongside acknowledging what's going on, acknowledging and trying to notice what could be good. So that's a season to notice what shines on us. And let's also have this be a season to let our lights shine as individuals, as families, as a church, not to put our light under a basket where it can't be seen. That would be silly if I put my light under, under something, why would I do that? What flame we keep inside us cannot light the way. The light must spill to shine. The thing you must be is yourself, unadulterated. I think that's a beautiful message for um, this Sunday when we are in pride season. Um, we're also celebrating, um, many folks are celebrating Juneteenth and celebrating freedom and liberation and being um, free. It's a time for individuals and groups to shine forth, not as someone else's assumptions um, think we, we are based on racism or based on the other isms and not as some way that oppression tries to force us to be, right? Like you have to be like that kind of person, but and not as the exploited producer consumer that capitalism wants us to be, but to shine forth as holy and imperfect and messy human people, beloved as we are. And we are called to take off from ourselves, metaphorically, that which leaves our gifts um, ineffective or in the shadows. I read a lovely commentary on the passage about the light under the bushel. And this writer uh, points out that the lamp under the bushel isn't extinguished, it's just rendered ineffective. And she had a twist for th thinking of this in terms of a congregation. Quote, think about the bushels that cover your congregation's light. What are they? Maybe the bushel is an inferiority complex, a lack of confidence that comes from chronically comparing ourselves to the big church across the street or the good old days when our church was full of children and youth. She says, the inferiority bushel blocks out God's light. She continues, or perhaps the bushel is the fantasy church in our minds. This sort of bushel is seductive because it seems so positive and it feels so good. Such holy longing for an imagined future can indeed fuel us. However, she says, it is equally likely that we indulge in lots of incantational speech without any concrete effort or action in the present. Our church fantasies can leave us unable to build a common life with the real people around us. Magical thinking covers our light." End quote. I think I am particularly um, guilty sometimes of um, the bushel of the fantasy church in my mind of how everything could be if I was a little better or if we could do this more or this was different. Um, but her point is those bushels don't belong there. We don't need them. No supernatural or holy power put them there and doesn't want, there's, there's nothing that wants them there. Some nonsense put them there, but nonsense doesn't win in the end. And that we are called to be the congregation that we are. That's not to say that we don't have things to improve, ways to grow. Um, here at our church, I think about examining the ways our practices have whiteness as a norm or in, which are off-putting or marginalizing or hurtful to members who are people of color or who are transgender or non-binary, who are poor or working class, um, to get out of that idea that we are one um, monolithic way of being. Um, I think it's true that holy longing for an imagined future can fuel us. And I also love her assertion that we are called to build common life with the real people around us. Um, I'm here to be your minister, not because of some imagined church, but because I love you guys. Our governing board has been having a series of uh, really interesting discussions this year about a strategy to increase the membership and diversity of the community. There's going to be some stuff about that in your newsletter soon. But one place that they have reached is curiosity. 
and I was just hearing about this as I returned. And that the idea is that the next step is to be curious about who we really are as people, not just who we assume we are as members of the church, as families, as the church. And just to say like, okay, well, what are our stories? What is your background like? What are your gifts? What do you love? What are your experiences of trouble, of, of difficulty, of spirit, of wonder, um, of curiosity, of, of coming out, of families coming together and coming apart, of immigration, of all of the things? What are, who, who are we? And how can we nurture our curiosity and learn more about one another? Because we are actually a pretty amazing group of folks. In this occasion of the end of the church year, I love this connection that Reverend Soto makes between spilling our light and being in community. And to what have we promised ourselves? She says to, the, they say, sorry, to this moment in time and place, to this community and even tenderly interconnected this planet. And I love their reminder that we haven't promised each other that we are perfect or that um, only that we will try and that we will be who we are with one another. Um, they, in our, in our church covenant of relationship, we promise one another to be a part of this community, to journey together, to listen to it with care, to address one another directly, to sustain and build community, and when we feel that we have failed, to try again. The thing you must be is yourself, unadulterated, shedding the willingness to journey alone, as though you are made of something hard and unforgivable, you are human. You belong right here, right now. What flame we keep inside us cannot light the way. Our light must spill to shine. And so in this solstice season, <clears throat> in this close of the church year, this is my, my prayer and vision uh, to light our way, as that our lights and our light together spill and lead us and illumine a path to more curiosity, to depth, wholeness, compassion, liberation, and deeper relationship with our one another, with our own truest selves, and with that which is holy and which binds us together. May it be so.